Hello, this is Jerry the King Lawler from WWE SmackDown, and right now you're listening to Journey into Wrestling. I don't know why you're listening, but you are. To a nicer guy, it couldn't happen. I'm the man of the hour, the man with the power. Diamonds are forever. He put hard times on Dusty Rhodes and his family. And what you gonna do, Andre? History beckons the macho man. Yeah. The best there is. The best there was. Austin 316 says I just whipped your ass. Two words for ya. Two words. Do I have everybody's attention now? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode three of Journey into Wrestling. I'm co-host Nate Brando. How's it going, man? What's up, dude? Oh, it's going. And it's, it's pretty good, man. We're here sort of live. Ooh, and nice Easter Dylan's egg. Dylan's calling. Like you that. know, we're kind of hanging out here in the game room. Oh, uh, if anyone's listened to the Game Addicts podcast, it's sort of the same get up. We're just kind of hanging out in the game room. So if you hear any, like... No noise in the background, Smash Brothers, something like that. Hopefully that doesn't flag YouTube. Yeah. Hey, I'm still undefeated at Mario Kart. You by are. The way. You are. Um, Same now, as one race. Uh, I, I hope if you're hearing this that you'll uh, go check out our live 100 episode that we actually did live on stage here. It was pretty neat. Um, really cool and really fun to do. We're gonna have to unpack that on our next actual journey. In yeah, the comics. On, the, on the actual yeah, yeah, journey yeah. in the comics. But <laughs> joining us here today is a guy who just joined me on the Game Axe podcast, uh, our good friend Tony Jenkins. Hi. Uh, now, right before I hit play, or record, if yeah. you will, you mentioned that this was sort of a culmination of maybe a lot of practice down in the basement because this is, this is you know, three-fourths of a band that used to exist. I mean, that's, it's a weird reunion type thing. I didn't even think about that. Technically, we never called it quits. So we technically right. never broke up. No. <laughs> so is yeah. it kind of like System of a Down where you just guys stop hanging out and stop doing stuff together? Uh, and there's a lot of conjecture out there among fans of whatever happened to them. Are they going to get together? Going to do something? And yeah. then I don't know where we're going to play the cubby bear with the corn. Or Stink Ditch, depending on what generation you're <laughs> talking <laughs> about. VH1 was you know? talking about doing another behind the music and getting a hold of us. And, you know, <laughs> talking out my ass, of course. But uh, it'd be a nice story. It but, would be nice. But story. seriously, I think we got yelled at more for talking during band practice than messing up or not practicing. Because all we would do is sit there and bullshit about anything else. Comic books, movies, television, and everything nerd, video games, wrestling. All of that stuff. We would talk about all that stuff, and then we were like, oh, yeah, we're supposed to We should probably play this play song. song. Yeah, play a song <laughs> yeah let's play this song. So then we would play this song, and then the moment we started talking again, we would get the stink eye. Yeah. He'd, he'd sit back there with his drumsticks. You're, you're talking about my father. Yes, I am. We, we, we allude to that, but let's make that official. Mason yeah. never did that. No, because he wasn't. It, actually, there was, what, two show, two shows, three shows you did with us before Mason left? It was yeah, jack shit. It was a really short Because it was time. like literally the demise of the band in the first in the first iteration because we were kind of closing the Jason chapter. Right. And then opening up what it well, eventually became kind of this with Tony, not ending with, thing. With, with Tony, I want to say we did, we, we, did the, we did the wire forks. Yep. And then we did uh, the, the two. No, we did the show at the Legion with the other bands where they came and promoted their other show that's right that's we did that right. one so that's two then we and, did the two uh, in the next year like 06 because that fall we took a break and we worked on in theaters yeah we also had icing the body electric well technically that so was that was the first that, that was the first show, yeah. first show the, yeah. so that wire forks uh the the Humi show because another band played Humi, and we were like what the fuck right yeah. like, dude and we did it better actually i agree i actually agree with that yeah. No, no disrespect to whatever that band is called. They, they don't exist anymore. They don't? Because uh, TJ from Trash City, who's now part of not Era that. Era Cobra. Era Cobra or whatever. Uh, okay. I, I don't, yeah. Um, is he Era Cobra, really? TJ? Yeah. yeah. He's one of the guitar players in Era Cobra, man. They really check him out. That's interesting. I've heard of him. I've, 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 I've heard of them, but I didn't know TJ was a part of that. I do. Great band live. Uh, oh, Great. okay. Um, um, so, hold on. So, that's, what, three. Mm-hmm. And then you have the two in 06. Or... We'd, no, we did New Year's. Yeah, New Year's. New Year's. From so the that's basement. four. Then we did... 06 was a really busy year because we did, eight, uh, we did uh, a show in January. 
January. Then we did um, the February massacre. Mm-hmm. Then we did the Day on the Gray March show in the basement, right? And then we did my your last. final show, which was around my birthday. It was on the twenty second. I said my I say. final show. Final show. You're like a classic comic book character. <laughs> you just died and came back. It's cool. It's cool, but, but not know, really. This. With everything we've got going on right now, there's nothing really stopping us from collaborating online with the technology that we've got. Absolutely. Right. It we would can, be so fucking easy. We could actually do like another Draxus album. We'd never actually be around each other. <laughs> yeah. It would be a little it would be interesting. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's amazing how like some bands who just can't stand each other, why they don't just do that. Yeah. Uh well, Slipknot at a time did that. That was how uh, All Hope is gone. gone was recorded because Joey was never to be around Corey. It just wouldn't happen. You know, and then they played shows together. So. Learned something new every day. Yeah, you really didn't know that, huh? No, I didn't. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Corey and well, the, Joey at the That was the only album they actually other. recorded in Iowa, too. Yeah, also true. Mm-hmm. And that was part of it is because they could all go home afterwards and, like, decompress, whereas, like, they feel like that was part of the missing connection for that album because they were... All, I liked that all album. All the other times, just, they would always be, like, in the zone, locked in together, working on this album, and that's, yeah. all, that's, that's all, that, all that existed. Meanwhile... Oh, it, it, it's fine. Okay, we're going on the fly here. Nate's messing with stuff. Are you serious? Yes. You? I couldn't pull my fucking. I had to be like. Well, that's how you were. <laughs> they had uh, to glued to the microphone. He didn't have room to move. Better. I wanted to slouch. Okay, I'm fucking lazy. You know what's <laughs> funny is that we, we we spent about an hour recording the last podcast. Yeah. And Tony complained about his butt hurting so much from sitting there doing that podcast. And, and then here all, we are doing this again. Well. But not only that, okay, not only are we doing another one, but that, that entire time, you just sat there anyway. <laughs> I've manned through it. I wasn't going to be like a little bitch. I'm like, guys, my butt hurts. I need to stand. Well, it's okay. Will someone rub me? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Brandon's going to do that later. He's going to take one for the team. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Interesting to learn. Kate would probably watch that. Probably. And if, I were sur- I would, if I were to surmise. Probably. Yeah, okay. Do we want to get into actual business or are we changing this show up all together and we're just going to call this Reminisce no, 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 Cast? No, I think business is good. <laughs> well, I think it is important to reminisce a little bit even though this is a wrestling podcast because it really is something that you and I have talked about pretty much since I joined the show was eventually getting Tony on the air to talk. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's been, been kind of a... What? Two years. Oh, two years in the making? Yeah. yeah. And, it, luck, and a lot of it's like... I don't know if you can Skype and shit. I don't, you know. He has a phone. He, anybody with a phone I, I, can I Skype. always forget that Skype and phones, it's the same thing because I have a fucking iPad. It's sitting right there, and that's my Skype. I don't have Skype on this thing. That's archaic. <laughs> I don't want to sound like Wes in a fish tank. Right. This wasn't even a planned deal either. It just so happens that we found out that you got... Uh, you were doing this, and I just happened to be here anyway because I support Chris and Vintage Villains. And uh, lo and behold, it works out for us. It works hey, out nice, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, once I, once you said you were going to try and be here today, I'm like, we had planned on doing a couple more off the stage. Like, maybe we can get something together and sit down and just have a chit-chat. So, I mean, definitely it's really cool because one of the things that we used to bullshit about a lot. Way too rep- much. Way too much was wrestling. Biggest band argument, I think, happened because of wrestling. <clears throat> Refresh the my memory. The fuck you heard around the world? Yeah. Uh, we Bret were Hart talking sucks. about Bret Hart. <laughs> oh. And Dad's like, Bret Hart sucks. And you went, fuck you. And he went, excuse me. And yeah. I thought I wore... And you know what the crazy thing is? They're the most two relaxed guys in the band. They are. And then here, it's like, yeah, I remember that. Because I just look, I just shut up. <laughs> I wasn't I was about like, to <laughs> say a word after that. Because I knew that was like not a serious Your, your phone deal. went in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and Just the like funny the thing is, is from my perspective, I knew what Brandon was saying. He wasn't saying it uh, maliciously. You were just like, "Well, no fuck what you think," you know, like whatever. Right. And it would like that. I don't care about your thought, but Dad, being old school, he heard "fuck you" and he heard it. "it's on." Remember you know? what me and your dad used to tell you all the time? It's not what you say; it's, it's how, how you say, say it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Brandon had that defensive tone. And then Jim just kind of like, it's like, oh, really? Do you want to step out behind the woodshed? You know, is this place this back in my day type deal? It's like, mm. Yeah, so that was that was wild. Over I've, Bret Hart, because Bret Hart, I think that was right when he came back. He, he was just coming buried back. Buried the yeah. hatchet. Yeah. It was maybe the week after that. Yeah. 
Yeah, because your dad was dogging on Brett. Brett's one of my old favorites, man. Me too. Absolutely. I love Brett. One of the best books ever written was by Brett Hart. Oh, dude, the, the, like his autobiography. My 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 true life my, story in this cartoon world of wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that became my Bible for a while. It's so good, dude. Like whenever I would have nothing to do on the crapper, I read that. Yeah. And I say that I say that with all sincerity. Before uh, before we could do a lot on mm. these on like on our cell phones, right? You know, I man, you would read stuff. I, I read that. I read that book from front to back so many times. I. I know there's stories in there, like, it's like I could tell them and they were my stories almost. So if you had to throw out a guesstimate, how many times did your legs fall asleep while you're on the toilet because of this? A good number of times. <laughs> okay. I tell you what, man. You know what? I'm a Honestly, quick shitter, man. Dude, I am not. In and out. Just I am go, not, just dude. I do can't. the deed. I feel it. I go. It's There's no delay. Just no, dude. move dude, forward with life. I want to do other like things. It's almost like a cathartic thing for me. I mean, if it's before a shower or something, that's like, you know. That's like the best time, you know, to, to take a shit. It's just, well, I mean, like, I think he just said he doesn't wipe his ass. He no, just jumps in the shower. He's like, oh, there it is. He gets no, the shower I still, head and puts I, it on the, the, oh, no. the harsh. <laughs> it's sit there and it's, it's like bidet in the shower. Uh, you know, no, that and does yeah, not they, happen. And that's when you angle it a little too much. You go, ooh. ooh. <laughs> that does not happen. This is Journey to Wrestling, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Nice, long, 10-minute cold open. That was a test intro. <laughs> oh, that was funny as Pretty shit. Pretty much. Doing uh-huh. sound levels. Oh, dude, it's awesome. Anyway, guys, uh, one thing that I definitely want to talk about here today, and, uh, and uh, of course, Tony has said that he's a little behind on stuff, but he, he knows wrestling. He can weigh in his opinion. Regardless. And, you're right. And the big news coming out, and it was really weird how they're doing this now, how they're letting like the website and social media break certain things that they would save for television. Yeah, they're like, making it more um, social media interactive. Right. Well, see, normally, like back in the day, they'd have been like, ending of Raw, there's a new brand split. Now it's like, oh, by the way, uh, today at noon, WWE.com broke the news that July 19th, SmackDown's going live on Tuesdays. And new right brand after split. Raw, yeah. You almost don't even have to watch it anymore. <laughs> it's getting to the point. You know, and that, and it's funny that you said that. For a long time, I didn't watch wrestling. I would literally just read the recaps on ProWrestlingScoops.com, uh, which is a shitty site, but that goes without saying. No DQ.com. Uh, no DQ. I'm not, I, don't, I need to yes, go there. But, all uh, those old videos. <laughs> uh, but I lost my thought. Yeah, you were talking about this pro happens wrestling. to him <laughs> on a not watching wrestling. Oh yeah, not watching wrestling. So to get back to not watching wrestling, I would read, you know, and it wasn't until more recently when when NXT Takeover started happening that I feel like I do myself a disservice if I don't at least sit through and watch the Hulu recap of Raw and SmackDown. Try to watch the new Blood upcoming. Well, I don't have to. I know who's new, and they're not really new. They're like legends on the indie circuit, you know. And, and it's just timing. Timing is everything. It's you, like all the times you wanted the fucking indie guys to be on top and they were pushed down by fucking Dave Batista and people like that, now is the time where they're not because those guys, your big guys, can't last forever. They wear out quicker because the muscle mass, you know? These little dudes and these smaller statured guys, they're all just phenomenal. And I mean, even Big Cass is not a little guy. But he is a thin-framed man. He yeah. isn't. He's not like I say. He's not Dave. I hate to say it, but Dave Batista, bulky. That's when you think extreme, big Papa Pump, muscly. You know what right. I'm saying? So, I always am just the buff. big bad booty daddy. Daddy, uh, uh, I'm buff. I'm the stuff, <laughs> and the girls just can't get enough. Oh God, so gross. You gotta push past the pain, make the body grow. <laughs> Yo. Oh, <laughs> yeah. the big pump pump workout video. We need to show him that after the oh, show. Gosh. It's funny as shit. Oh dude. man, that was one of the really early, like early, early podcast things mm-hmm. where like we watched something and sort of like reviewed it. Was this workout video on YouTube of big pump a pump? And the the funniest thing about Scott Steiner is always the fact that he is so out there with his sayings. Yeah, and, and he can't he, wipe his ass. Oh yeah, you know it. He can't get around. Yeah. Uh. This is this is his moment. Mo, like this is, you know. we were in this building, uh, two thousand eight. Oh, June, two thousand eight. Weird. The TNA was live here. Yeah, nice. and I was like second row, and these guys were like, uh, like you guys were like in the seats. Somewhere. Yeah, but uh, we sat there the whole show, and I think it was like almost close to the main event. And I look over there, and I'm like, that's Nate. 
that's Sarah. Holy shit. <laughs> and uh, I do remember Scott Steiner was here that yeah. night. So it was Joe and Styles. And yeah, I got. Uh, jo- I have that picture with Joe and yep. Styles Me in and my RKO shirt because I was fucking rebellious. Yeah, you were. I See, I actually bought a TNA branded shirt. Like, just never in my wildest dreams would I buy a shirt that just says WWE on it. But I was so into TNA at the time that I was supportive of the brand that I actually bought a TNA shirt. The logo was fucking cool. Oh, the logo's badass. I mean, it's, but then, you know. You know, then they say, hey, if you want to if you want to take a picture with Samoa Joe and AJ Styles in the ring, it's 10 bucks. And Joe will sign the thing. And Joe will have it. like uh, what guy we're actually going to be talking about later on. Jeff Harvey. Yeah. The same thing, right? Where was that at? Okay, that was in Hammond. That's actually Hammond? it's it's really it's really fucking weird because at the time that me, Sarah, Angie, and Tony went to this event, and and, and you'll recount, I wasn't living up there. I was right. with I was living with dad still. So when we went up, we went and stayed at Sarah's parents, and you know, and and that is what it is because they're a little bizarre. Um, they're out there, but we go to this wrestling event that now is literally two blocks from my house. I literally can walk there in a heartbeat. And I, n- I did just, you, n- you never put two and two together. And um, that was when we met Jeff Hardy. We have a picture in the ring with him. He was a very nice fellow. That was the same day that I literally cut an entire line of people to get Jeff Jarrett's autograph. <laughs> and Nate over here, RVD. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I met RVD, too. He was super chill. Uh, but, no, uh... During the matches, oh, and every remember, every at the every single fucking break, I screamed at the top of my lungs, "Tweet me, Bo Rash," because I was trying to start a fucking Twitter feud with Jeremy Bo Rash just to see, and then it didn't go anywhere. So while we're on TNA, sort of rumors hitting the hitting the uh, dirt sheets out there. Oh yeah, about TNA is once again behind in paying its talent. Doesn't surprise me. I know, this is the second time that I remember seeing it. It may be may have been more than that, but it's definitely the second time that I've seen yeah. this uh, happen. Dun, 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 dun. WWE now owns TNA. It's I, ECW too. Well, the the fucked up thing, Tony, and I know you don't really watch so much, but NXT, which is like the modern OVW, okay, NXT is better than TNA. I'll let you sleep on that for a second. But that's I don't the think reality. That's, hard to do. <laughs> that's no, but but really, Personally. but really, with the talent that they have over there, if they were to use their brains, they could get themselves out of this. But they just, they don't have the right people running that business. Do you know who the NXT champion is right now? No, Samoa Joe. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, that boy could move. And also, they are in talks with Eric Young to sign with the company, and also Bobby Roode. Yep. And while uh, no, I'm sorry, not Wonka. Cowboy James Storm actually was in talks to come into WWE through NXT, but then ultimately decided to re-sign with TNA and then reform beer money just in time for Bobby Roode to leave and go talks with WWE. <laughs> so now Bobby Roode is uh, um, Austin over. Aries is now in NXT. Wow. I mean, dude, it's uh, stacked. Are they following the money, or are they just thinking this is a better company Well, NXT is a really – it is, to me – a WWEized, sort of, because they do put a more emphasis on in reaction. Okay. Uh, but it definitely has a production value of WWE. But take what TNA was like ten years ago, and how much of an underground vibe it had, and you know we're we're the next big thing. Well, that's yeah. that's how this feels. It put so much on the map. I mean, they had their little like was it the X division going on. The different ring styles, those cages. I mean, they really had like a lot of potential. The lockdown pay per view. If you ever, like you said, you had the network. Yeah, I've got WWE Network. Check out some of the NXT stuff, especially like the live takeover events. Those are like their pay per views. I would watch okay. Takeover Dallas. Absolutely. You need to check out the and match then, between Cesaro and Sami oh Zayn. Oh my God. Uh, what was that? That was the first take. That a was, rival? That was a rival. Oh my God. And it's That was like sort of like their. Their big match that to settle their feud because they already had a, already had some really good great matches. Some argue that the two out of three one was even better than this one, but this one it was just it, it had everything. Okay, it had everything that you ever wanted. Now TNA and we've actually talked about this. Was it the last episode? Was it episode two? 
in XTNA. It seems to be a running theme. Well, right. Well, see, eventually I want to get my friend Joe on, and we're actually going to do a whole episode dedicated to, like, talking about TNA. I have a whole mini collection of TNA DVDs. This guy that I work with is the only guy that he's he can talk with me about TNA better than even me. He knows TNA. He likes TNA. He doesn't really watch it much anymore. Dedicated follower there. He was, man. He was into it back then. And uh, I definitely want to get him on because whenever we talk wrestling, eventually he'll he'll throw Matt Bentley out there. And I'm oh, like, wow. Dude, that's deep cut. Dude, that is deep cut. Like, I, I barely remember Matt Bentley. And then I start thinking. I'm like, dude, okay, that was like 04, 05, like X Division, man. But Petey Williams. Yeah, Petey Williams. Well, man, he was great. Low pump. Uh, he had Damn. the uh, Canadian power bomb. And uh, well, it was like, the uh, Canadian destroyer. Canadian it was the destroyer. flipping power driver. Yeah, I remember seeing that. That's a pretty impressive and very dangerous maneuver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, since we're on the topic of TNA, oh, wow. did I show you? Oh, we never even. <laughs> no. I never got to show him. I showed Tony. <laughs> well, I'll 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 watch it after and I'll react. Uh, uh, if this is what I think it is, I love it. But I, I <laughs> we may have to hit pause. Just you know what, um, folks, we're going to take a quick intermission. Tony, if you could hit the uh, the square, the stop button. This one. Yep. Okay. Now, and we're back. Sorry, I had to take that quick break. That was the weirdest fucking video, Brandon. What did you just show me? Well, okay. As I showed Tony. Okay. Wow, Dan, <laughs> that looks suggestive. <laughs> Okay, so that video was uh, the Matt and Jeff Hardy contract signing at Matt's barn ring that they supposedly wrestled on when they were kids. Brother Nero. <laughs> what? Like, what is that? Like, is that their storyline? Okay, look. What happened to Matt Hardy? Like, he looks like he's like got zapped by dumb. More well, drugs see, than Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> see, that's to me, a, Matt looks like. Have you ever seen The Great Outdoors? Yes. The guy that got struck by lightning yeah. like 66 times. And then by the end of the movie, he gets zapped again, and he has like a white streak in his hair. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, he looks yeah. exactly like that. And he's he's off his rocker, okay? As, as, as I said to to Tony, I said, I can't, like, Jeff Hardy must be looking at this going, really? Just look like, at his facial expressions in the video. He's like, you got to be fucking shitting me. I, uh, why are... Why are we doing this? I mean, do we get nothing better? Is this what we're reduced to? Well, and Jeff can probably be saying, like, dude, I messed up and worked Victory Road against Sting high and messed up off my rocker and got shit for that, and yet this is flying right now in TNA. Yeah, exactly. Like, holy crap, dude. What were you smoking? If you didn't get it from me, I don't do that anymore. No. <laughs> That's Scott's just... honor. At least, I, from what I understand, Jeff's pretty clean. But Oh, yeah. I mean... <sighs> After that, he probably went to a bar. Dude, I would have. <laughs> Me too. And what's the deal with, was that Matt's wife? Was that yeah, Matt? No, that was Jeff's wife. Was it Jeff's think. wife? What was she doing there? She was throwing that fake baby throwing at Throwing that him. fake baby? Yeah, to, to, to turn heel on, on Jeff Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Adamley. <laughs> so, do There's you remember that? There's one man that has a problem with that, and that man is Jeff Harvey. <laughs> On on Raw, he no, fucked. No, it up. wasn't Raw. It was the Royal Rumble. Oh, it was Rumble. That's right. Jeff Harvey. Ha oh wait, he, he, Jeff Harvey. Yeah, Hardy. Yeah. He the messed up worse than happen. you did when you said MCU for DCU. Yeah, well that happens. No, no, no. You no know? That is blasphemy and unforgivable. Messing up at a pay per view. Well, eh, you it's you know, happen. it's the transition that's going to happen with me in comics because I used to be a huge Marvel guy, and as I'm getting older. Wait, I, did you say a douche Marvel guy? No, a huge. Oh, okay. Huge yeah. Marvel guy. I was a douche Marvel and, guy. And <laughs> now I'm moving into loving DC way more. Like, I love the comic side of DC. I'm not really a big fan of their movies, but, like, Marvel's got the movie thing down, so I can enjoy Marvel. Yeah, but they're too predictable. It's too bright. No character really has to actually worry about dying. Not even Rhodey. Um. Yeah. Quicksilver died. Spoiler alert. It has remained dead. And he's not coming who, back. Who, who, who cared about him? He, he was their Flash. Nobody until this movie came out. Except for Nobody less good. Nobody cared about him. Nobody cares no, about that's No, actually, that's not true. Do because you know what he did? He goes, but you didn't see that coming. And that's all he did for that movie. That's true. It was that whole emotional thing. But we also thing, have X-Men going on. 
with another Quicksilver. Which I like the uh, Evan Peters as He's Quicksilver. Doing a good job. I haven't did you see this new movie? I have not, but I just watched this introduction and uh was it Days of Future Past? Yeah. I was really that impressed. was awesome. That's a that really, really sick set the, scene. Set the ground for me Absolutely. as far as that character goes. Uh so where were we at? We were talking remember. about the whole Matt Jeff thing. Yeah, it's just I don't know, man, it's bizarre. It's really a weird video you showed me and you're like you're like, did you see this video with Matt and Jeff? And I was like, no, like I don't watch TNA. What? Why would I do that? You know? And then, I, you guys were watching it when I came back in. Yeah. And I did like I tuned out because I didn't want to have any spoilers. Right. I really should have waited until you got back. But it I doesn't really matter. No, it doesn't even it. matter. It's not even a big so, deal, man. So, so we did the break now. For everything else, I mean, it, it was really well produced. And yeah. They did a lot of drone shots, if you notice that. They like the big overhead. And yeah. Th- they had some generic, uh, like, license-free music getting played. Yeah. The for, one uh, kind of sounded like Austin's theme, though. The dun, 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 dun. That's yep. Barbecue Pit Boys. They play that for Barbecue Pit Boys. I heard that and went, wow, okay. Uh, oh, that's awesome. That um, that whole, you're right. There was a lot of production value in there. I at least... The one thing I was talking to you about, well, that table not having much give to it, you think they could have afforded to actually put at least a wrestling table in there to soften up that landing? Because that real. looks like oh. it really hurt. Oh, man. And it hit him in the face on the flip. I mean, they land through it, and that thing smacks one of them either in the back of the head or in the front right of their the face. Near yeah, there was no fixing that. No, and I mean, you see, it snapped the fuck off. Forever. What? What is that accent that he's using? I don't know. It's almost like uh, he's like over Shakespearean acting, you know? Dude, tell me. Okay, now, I hit the table. But tell me that I wasn't the only one that thought of this. And maybe it's too obscure for you. I don't know how much WCW you watched. Do you remember the maestro? He, he, they used to lower the piano down and he'd yes. like play the piano. Him yes. playing the piano made me think of the maestro. And then he goes, I knew you would come, even though at the beginning of the video he goes, I've invited you all, the world, and my brother Nero. He goes, well, yeah, you knew he'd come because you invited him. Yeah, so I think he had a match, or at least like a small little feud, with the artist formerly known as Prince Iakea. Yes. Oh, yeah. that's a deep cut. Prince <laughs> Iakea. Yeah. That is a throwback. Uh-huh. When you said the maestro, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember this guy. And uh, then you remember Berlin. Oh. <laughs> Berlin was great, although Das Wunder Kid would have been much better. He went back to that eventually, didn't he? Alex Wright. I don't know. Dude, he's a second generation star. Really? Yeah. He started wrestling when he was like 15 in Germany. And wow. then when he was by the time he was 18 or 19, he got signed by WCW. Wow, he was that young working in WCW in that era. His rookie year, uh both him and uh, Triple H were kind of going around the same time. And they were both young up and comers. Yeah. And they had a match at Starcade 94. Both of them were undefeated. Alex went over, and it was funny because then in 95 Shortly thereafter, uh, Triple H would ask for his release, or he wouldn't resign. Yeah. And then he would try to go to the WWE. And get in. And then ultimately. get in there, and then he did, ended up getting in there. I, I think it was sometime in 95 he got in. But hey, Alex can still dance with the best of them. Yes, he can. <laughs> he can get, man, he can boogie down for sure. Ernest the Cat Miller. I'm just thinking about WCW guys. Mm-hmm. I was just thinking I'm about. I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest. What? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Dude, it's funny because he actually sort of became somebody of, like, note on their programming, whereas Glacier was nowhere close. Glacier didn't – he tried the Sub-Zero deal. It just didn't carry over. I mean, the people weirdest forgot thing. about him. But, I mean, but, and funny thing about it being produced, his intro was really like, – with the falling snow and the stream lights, it, it was really cool looking. Yeah, and how much that cost every time to do. Yeah, well, Turner he, didn't give a fuck. Well, no, we'll see. And <laughs> Here, have more. I, yeah, he's but just like, here, need more? Okay. Ahead they more were, snow, guys. How far ahead they were as far as theatrics. Because mm. that kind of stuff is going to come up I mean, la- la- like having laser show in- built into the thing. With the, with the falling snow, it's like yeah. there are certain things like the WWE does. Or, you know, okay, like, as I said, I had been watching 98 WWF going into, w- going into 99. And I-, I watched like about two or three or four months of programming within about a couple weeks. Yeah. Every time Gold Dust comes out, it's that gold glitter. Gold glitter. They don't do that anymore. Yeah. No. That they whole would. era about it, you're right. Both branches, they were, like, taking things from each other. I mean, Austin, the most he ever got was a beer truck, and then he actually had a pane of glass break. Yeah, but, I mean, it, they, it was mania. still something cool, though. I mean, it was... Zamboni? 
Anybody? Oh, the Zamboni. He got the Zamboni. Uh, what about the, the uh, him truck? him ruining uh, Vince's car with cement? Corvette. The the Corvette with cement. His black Corvette and the windows they, exploded. They let oh, him do was, a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. I can only imagine. Rock had some cool shit too, though. You know what? Not as much. He did have some stuff. Do you remember the time when they destroyed a whole like DX's tour bus? Yeah, I do. Like, like Austin dropped a. What did he drop on there? C four. <laughs> It was some kind of explosive. He dropped something and the whole tour bus blew up. And they're like, ah, damn you, I think that Austin. was back when, when, you, when as a kid you assumed that if you drop something heavy on a vehicle, it just explodes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it wasn't even a weapon or anything. They just dropped something like they just dropped a heavy ass beam. We'll see. And then they, the didn't, even, beam, so yeah. they didn't even have to like drop anything on Vince's limo when it blew up. No. <laughs> and then he wasn't dead the next week. Why was that again? Chris Benoit was dead. Oh, yeah. I His family. Oh, yeah. They didn't tap out. Or they were tapping out. <laughs> they, well, no, they, they were supposed to. They were, oh, yeah, they were, we're supposed to. Uh, we're going to have to edit that out, audience. <laughs> Why would Sorry we edit that. anything out? I, I remember when I showed Tony that picture, and he was probably, like, offended and thought it was so hilarious at, the, at like, the same time. And... I couldn't say anything to him for like five minutes. He just kept looking at it and laughing. Listen, yeah. comedy and tragedy are one and the same coin, honestly. And, oh, and, yeah. and one thing that you have to do is, as a person, to cope with shitty things happening is make light of it and, and have the stupid jokes. I mean, why the fuck do you think there were so many Michael Jackson jokes after he died? Because there was material there, but you can't use that material until he's dead or you look like a certain kind of yeah, person. Yeah. You there's, know? like, no material for Prince. They're just like... No, it's it and that's right. very sad. It's, he was a great artist. We talk artist. about the good things he did. In the last podcast, he talked about making light of a tragedy. We were reminiscing about Owen Hart's death. Yeah, See, and that's... Yeah, and that's another thing too, man. You want yeah. you know what was fucked up? I got I, I I got nervous thinking about it, but I finally went and watched Over the Edge, and it's completely edited out. Like it, right. it they don't even make any mention of it. Even Jr. saying the thing, they don't make mention of. Well, yeah, they, they they probably just cut that entire segment, and any time they mention it, they probably it's probably just silent. Yep, yep, and it's a really bizarre. You know what's fucking really thing. awkward? And I mean, we're just riffing right now, but. When you go back and you watch select WCW matches from the era when Jesse Ventura was on commentary, a lot of that stuff is edited out because he sued the WWF for, for like, payments for stuff like that. Like, they were putting that stuff out, and he wasn't getting compensated for it. And so they just edited him out. Because yeah. we know how Vince will get. He'll be like, I don't want to use it anyway. You know, and edit it out. Meanwhile, they you have Tony Schiavone, who... Talking to himself. <laughs> yes, and, and he'll like he'll say something, and then there'll be like two minutes of silence because Tony's talking during that time, but he's talking to Jesse, so they can't. That's got to be an awkward conversation. He asks a question. There's silence. <laughs> just, just no response. He's like, yeah, I agree with that. It's like nobody said anything. Do you know? Do you know what would have been funny if they would just take taken a guy, say like. You know, like Mick Foley, and just made him like react to Tony Schiavone back in 1992. I don't know. I've got the guy for that, and that's motherfucking. Wait a minute. Oh shit. ECW. Joey Styles. Styles? Joey fucking Styles. Well, Joey see, he Styles. was a great one man uh, broadcaster and yeah. commentator. I always wondered about that when I played the first ECW video game, and he's talking by himself. I'm like. I could have sworn that last time I watched, they had more going on they in the commentary. They occasionally do have other people, or had other people with Joey. Like, like Joel Gertner would be with him, and he would sort of be like the over-the-top character. Okay. Uh, but a lot of the times, it was just Joey because Paul really liked Joey, and it was unique only having one guy on commentary. And then that made room for if wrestlers wanted to come in, if they were, it was, you know, if it was a match or a feud, they could come in and it would just be Joey and the other guy. It wouldn't be two guys and then this guy. Yeah, the only yeah. other one man commentary guy I can really think of that really made me laugh my ass off would be The Rock. No, oh, well, yeah, The Rock was During commentating his, his own matches. That's genius. Brilliant. I loved it. Um, the Rock's about to whip his monkey <laughs> ass. You know, take the head, go back at it. Now, there's another thing that's kind of making waves on the internet that that Jeff and Matt thing did. And I showed, that, I showed you that video earlier, and it was that really 
uh, choreographed wrestling. I believe it's Ricochet and Osprey are the name of the two. And it was a, during an event in, in, in New Japan Pro Wrestling. And it's really over the top, really well done. Those spots are impressive as shit, man. It's oh, yeah. getting controversy on the internet because Vader spoke out against it and said that is not wrestling. Because it's all so... That, that's, that was... Okay, I will say this. It was more It was more like they were dancing because of how well the spots were planned. Mm. But they were still taking bumps. Oh, they were. And, and, that, and that being considered, you know, uh, kudos to them for having the, the, the balls to do something like that. Have a match that well planned at the end. And I don't know how the whole match went. I just saw what was the, the highlight, the highlight or the finish. You it's know? like a 22-minute match or something. But, 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 uh oh, got you, you got a phone call? No, it's an email from work. Ah, he just said it can wait. Where I'm doing nope, it? Nope, I was wrong. It's an Apple Store email. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so I personally believe that there is a spot for that kind of wrestling. Yeah, well, yeah. it really takes technical wrestling to the next level. Oh well, yeah. It, well, because there's always been. You know, cruiserweights, lighter weights. Like, I remember, you know, hearing, okay, because I wasn't there, but when people started first doing, like, a drop kick, it was a big deal. I can see that. You know? Because it was normally just two guys grappling each other, and this guy's kind of flying around, hitting some arms, hitting some elbows, doing a drop kick, and you're like, well, this is entirely new. It's it's exciting. Cruiserweights was sort of the same thing, like, especially, like, kind of like in the late 80s, early, you know, and again in the 90s, where you actually got to see a faster moving product. Of course, that then excelled into the indies where... God, we could do a whole podcast on cruiserweights. Well, like, okay, Hubitude. now the only... If, oh. if I had... Luchador. Huh? And Luchador. And, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Of course. Now, the only thing that I have to say about that clip is that they're sometimes they're reacting so fast, they're not selling. I agree with that. Yeah. So, so it's almost like what move is going to end this match? Because a lot of those moves are big impact moves, but they're moving so quickly to the next spot that they're not selling too much. And, and maybe that is because I didn't watch the full match. Okay. So I must say that 100% honest. You know, I need, I'm going to watch the full match, and I want to make sure that – because it doesn't seem like the whole match is like that. Mm. But during those big spots, there's a few moves in there that I would hold for a minute. Yeah, but if that's a highlight reel – yeah. What moves did they do that we didn't see that they're supposed to be taking damage from, and then later on they just get up like everything's a okay, and right. still be able to continue that? That means well, and that could have been a lot of like on the mat technical wrestling. The art the of selling side. is almost a, a lost art. There, there are some who are really good at it. Dolph Ziggler, come on! He oh bumps God, everybody. Dolph's the best. Ultimate Warrior was the master of selling. That's that is a completely thing. non-true statement. I know. <laughs> Andre taught him to sell. Yeah, I don't want to lose, so I'm just not going to. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, man, it's really getting. Uh, yeah, it's getting very busy in here. It is definitely getting busier in the game room. So hopefully, the is the audio all right? Is the audio good? sounds fine? Okay. I mean, it, it's a little. I can hear like what's going on a little bit, like a little bit of a buzz. But you know what? We're live, so right. you can't yeah. you can't but fake I mean, this. We can't eye replicate candy. it. I'm okay. Well, okay. That's, well, Dude. it is a bit different not having headphones on doing a podcast. I'll be honest because I do a lot of it on Skype and everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, no. <laughs> I'm just hearing more of it than I feel like I did earlier, and I feel like there's more people in here. But that's there definitely are. part of it. There, it's definitely a part of, like, the vibe because we're definitely here. We're definitely at VillainsCon. We're having a good time. That um, one thing I want to talk about here on the show as well is the advent of a new brand split. I'm excited to talk about this. I know Tony might be a bit backed up on this, but yeah, I'm just gonna let you two carry this. But you know, it's crazy. You could still totally talk about it, but talk about it from the perspective of like you were watching wrestling when the brand split happened the last time, and was that 05, 06, 05? Brand split started in 04? 2002. Two. I don't. Yeah, my my numbers aren't good. Uh, and it ended. It's been a while. And it ended in 2013. Yeah, that's a long ass time to have the brand split, and I was excited for the brand split to be over, you know. But uh, apparently, show and tell. Yeah, apparently, uh, our friend Daniel here came up with some comics. Wrong show. Wrong show, yeah. buddy. Wrong, Wrong show. show. I'll, I'll take a look at him while we're talking. Huge but flash. Nate, Huge so flash. So we have SmackDown going live January or January, July nineteenth. Yeah. Live on Tuesday. So they're switching nights and they're switching 
time slots. Well, they, they actually aren't doing anything different. They're just broadcasting what they record anyways. Well, yeah, they're they're, they're changing broadcast nights because it's on Thursday. And it's on USA now, right? And that's been, SmackDown's been on USA for a year or two? You know, I think they've been on USA since... Because I didn't re- even realize that until I just watched this last SmackDown. And I was like, on I think it's USA? Been since January. Oh, yeah. Well, then that, that, that would make sense. But, I mean, you saw the brand split happen the first time. Yeah. As a kind of a former wrestling fan who could maybe be swayed into rewatching it and, 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 and what? A lapsed fan. A lapsed fan. Thank you. Did you get uh, two of the same one, buddy? So, uh, but with that being said, like, what do you think? Do you think that this brand expansion is going to be good for the for business? Keeping, because literally it's just like the last time, everything's separate from each other. Well, it's going to have to keep people drawn in to where they're going to have to watch both programs to see the people they want. But they have the talent to do that, too. That's the yeah, fucking so weird thing. For they... once, it might be in their favor to do so. But um, I don't know. It's just last time I really like watched wrestling, I was talking to Brandon. And I said, I've got the WWE Network, and every once in a while I'll tune in, watch the highlights from like a Raw episode maybe once every three or four months. I'll just look at it. It's like, this looks so bland of a product, and the story sounds so dry i just don't even really want to tune in but maybe they're finally going to start getting their ducks in a row we'll see from a story standpoint i'd have to agree with you for the most part it has been a bit dry but we've been getting some really good matches especially oh, yeah. with, as he mentioned this new guard of like younger people coming from the indies they're really putting on some great shows on television and, and, and not to mention that with that comes a humongous tag team division I mean, we haven't seen their tag team years. division is fucking stacked. I, I could so we could probably sit here for a couple minutes and name at least ten teams in the tag division. I mean, Ascension, uh, Enzo and Cass, Enzo and Cass, Vod Villains, Vod Villains, New Day, New Day. Uh, what's the um, America? I can't think of their NXT. NXT, the American. Uh, wow, what are they called? I, I, American Alphas. Yeah. Uh, did you say... Lucha Dragons. Lucha Dragons. Uh, the uh, Ascension. You already said the Ascension. Did I? Where are the yes. Dudleys at now? Oh, Dudleys they, too. WWE. They're, yeah. they're, they're in I WWE. they were brought back, but I didn't see what brand. Yeah. yeah well, they're, well, there's no brand split yet. Uh, so. Wyatts. Oh, yeah, the Wyatts, the Wyatts. Obviously, they're, they're a tandem. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. How think many is that? Eight? That's nine. Nine? Uh, oh, so we need one more. One more. So the... the the team, I'm just going to say the team that, that American Alpha's just beat in NXT, that reminded me a lot of, like, the Power Drivers from, like, or, no, I'm sorry, the, 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 the Brain Busters, the old Arn and Tully. Okay. But, like, like, they come out in the old sports jackets and everything. Nice. It's a nice old school type gimmick. Like the Von Eriks? A little bit. They, they give you that old school vibe. Like, they were sitting there doing an interview holding their belt with it folded like they used to. Stand there I can and do really th- respect that. Then I like throwbacks like that. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember what their team is called. Like Dash and oh, uh, 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 uh. Dash, Dash and Dawson. Dash and Dawson. Yep, that's who they are. Dash and Dawson. They're on NXT. They kind of look like the Basham Bros too, a little bit. We'll see. Yeah, they kind of got like the the, sl- the yeah. short haircut and they're cut. They're not the biggest guys, but they're uh, but they can wrestle. You know. It, it, Did you say Vaude Villains? Yes. Okay, I couldn't. Um, yes, the no, tag team division is doing really good. The women's division is doing really good. My Okay, so my concern, and I have a couple of them with a new brand split, a three-hour Raw. Got to get it to two. I'm sick of a three-hour Raw. It's too fucking long. It's hard long. to watch. Even when I do watch it, I zone out. Too much mic time? Yes, and too much commercial time. Yeah. I mean, you think a three-hour Raw is really only like two hours and ten minutes? And the rest okay, is commercial. Okay, the way I see it, you need to go two-hour Raw, two-hour SmackDown. Yep. And then you have a one-hour NXT on Wednesday. Yep. Okay, because currently it's three hours Raw, two hours SmackDown, yep. plus one hour main event. Do they still do main event? And they do Superstars still. I just saw Superstars yesterday when I after I left Villains. And then, That's too much to be spread and out. And then NXT on Wednesdays, every Wednesday. But the reality is, is so that they, so they release how many how many hours of television per week? I mean, they have at least fifteen hours of content a week in wrestling. It is, and ridiculous. the crazy it's thing is, is that some of that it's 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 kind of smart though, because like SmackDown's usually what a uh, four hour event live in total because you have two hours for the show plus they do main event and uh, superstars in there too, which is really only thirty minutes of matches, usually only two matches. So it just like makes for a really long event, 
Raw doesn't usually. Oh, Raw does dark matches and something. I feel like right. I or do they do the, main event? I think they and used SmackDown to, does. I can't remember how uh, they switched matter. that up, and they've done some stuff with it. And then because and the, there for a while, main event was live on the network. And then NXT on, on is Tuesdays. four weeks of TV in one day. They do four hours of, of shit. Then they spread it out through a couple, and, you know, a couple weeks. It's, and it's really but smart. They have an hour show. Yeah. So they do like the old school WCW Saturday night tapings, where they would do a month worth of programming at a time. And then let it play out. And so I tell you what, you have your stars there, and you do a whole month, and then they get to go work live events. They don't have to do so, do as much TV. And it's that's, that's pretty smart. And it's really nice too, because like you would think, because you go to Full Sail University where they film NXT, and you would assume that it's got to be hard to keep the crowd amped for four shows. You have to do that every hour. They've got to act like it's the first hour, you know. And they do. The energy in that building has to just be insane. Well, having seen a couple house shows like we have, you know that what we don't see is probably those wrestlers really getting the crowd pumped up. Because sometimes, I mean, either they're going to carry it or they're not. But it's probably what we're not seeing that really makes that go on. At a, at a taping, it's a little bit more up, I feel. So, maybe may, at a house show, definitely, you're probably going to have a little bit, you know, the crowd's going to be a little bit more timid. But when you have the energy of, like, all the lights everything right it right. can get people into it a lot more and also if it's anything like when i went to judgment day 09 yeah uh deep cut there uh then like actually being at a live event is really really totally different because lillian came on the thing and she goes you know okay guys you're gonna see the screen and it's gonna say the old thing that it used to say when you had to order it on pay-per-view before the network, you know, about don't record this don't footage operate. and shit. They still, uh, and then they still put that on. And the then network. she said the pyro's going to go off, and you guys need to go nuts. And then it was it just exactly like that. Pyro goes off. And I was a little shell-shocked. I was like, whoa, that was way louder than I was expecting it to be. And it's intense, you know. And then, boom, you're just going nuts. Ah, We were on camera side, though, so I didn't have to go as nuts because I was like, oh, people on the camera side got it. I don't. No one's going to see my ass, you know. Like, I'm not worried about it. The other thing I have a concern about. Sure. I as tangented. I'm so sorry. Through. Huh? I said as I tangented on you. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, no, no. You're fine. All right. So we have the WWE World Heavyweight title. One title. They yep. merged. If, I don't know if you've noticed, but they merged the WWE title and World Heavyweight title into one. And we have one. Uh, Call me surprised. Okay. So then you have the Intercontinental U.S. title, yep. tag team title, yep. women's title. Yep. But the most important one's still missing. I want my hardcore championship back. I want my European championship back. What? That too. I want a television title. Oh. Oh, Disco Inferno. I think he was probably thinking RVD. No, I was actually thinking. WCW TV uh, title? Uh, they old Jericho? W- no, no. Dude, I'm even before that, bro. I'm like he's so OG dude, hipster. I'm he OG WA hipster. Dude, yes, I'm talking wow. like Tully Blanchard. Oh wow! I'm talking okay. like Arn Anderson. I'm talking to Steve Austin. I'm talking like guys that really and it, the, the the old school television title was really cool because it would be a 10 minute time limit, and then you had 10 minutes to, to defeat the champion. If you didn't to draw, champion retains. He doesn't have to beat you. That's it. That's awesome. <laughs> And you then, have to beat him, but yeah, he doesn't I'm just have to beat you. Gotta step out of the ring and get myself counted out and call it a day, right? <laughs> and then uh, I I don't remember if they extended that for pay per views or Clash of the Champions. I want a, a, if I were in charge, I would make it 15 minutes because it still makes it to where okay, you're not going to have a long match. You have to beat the guy in 10 or 15 minutes. You have to be able to get a victory. Okay, but to my original point, sure. I don't want there to be two world champions again. Nope. To, having a champion on each show devalues the Intercontinental U.S. title. I think those two should be well, drafted wh- in, in exclusive. What they need to do, what they they need to do is do what they did uh, before Lesnar won. The undisputed. And have one undisputed champ that defends on both shows. Doesn't matter. He can get challengers from whatever. Like and then that. the nice thing that you can do now is you can have six-man Money in the Bank ladder matches for one shot. Not two shots. You know what I'm saying? And have three dudes from Raw, three dudes from SmackDown, even the odds. You know That makes it interesting. And that way, you're not always so, oh, well, I know those feuds are going to happen because those are the biggest names on SmackDown right now. And I know 
those feuds are probably going to happen because they're the biggest names on Raw. Yeah, predictability has definitely been something that soured the WWE Fact. for a long time now. Fact. Yeah, I would only have the Intercontinental and U.S. titles be exclusive to brands. I would split those up per brand, and that would be that show's title, singles title. So How it was? IC on Raw? IC on Raw, US, US on U- It doesn't really matter where they go. It's just that title is that show's title, and when you hold that title, that means you're a legitimate contender on that show. Who does William Regal have to use the power of the pun shot to make this happen? Nobody, because he's, uh, he's the general manager, manager of, of NXT. NXT. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm really out of the loop. So, and he I, still has his old school music, which is bad as fuck. Really? Just that, saying. Yeah. <laughs> like that dictator music. I definitely have to tune in now. Um, Dude, it's good. I'm telling you, you're not going to be title, sad. Tag title and WWE World Heavyweight. I would actually keep those floating, and only appear on that show when they're actually in active feuds with whoever's on there. Or maybe they'll show up to give someone a shot. Yeah. Or either a shot, or they'll make an appearance because I mean, obviously. You know what they could do? What? And this is me riffing. Because everybody's thinking about this thing like, oh, it's all about who is on Raw and who is on SmackDown. But no one's talking about Stephanie running Raw and Shane running SmackDown or vice versa. Stephanie takes SmackDown. I guarantee you that there will be no man's championship because it will be Charlotte as the top dog. Because they've had women's title matches headlining Raw consistently. And you know what? It's fucking great. It's some of the best wrestling I've ever seen. They are getting it done. That's and, what really gets me. And 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 it's it's crazy. They actually are a crop of female wrestlers that don't just look good. NXT Takeover Brooklyn, the Bailey Sasha Banks NXT Women's Title match, amazing. Was one of the Stole best the matches I've seen last year. Yep. And yes, like that 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 women's brand in NXT helps started to shape and differ. To the point where where WWE has changed it, it's no longer the Divas division; it's the Women's division. So they're actually finally giving them the respect they actually deserve yes. instead of just showboating them. Yes. And All right, I dig it. Yeah, I mean, and and the 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 Jesus, the TV. We didn't even talk about the TV with Charlotte and Rick. God, I mean, a little, a little Ric Flair overacting, but fuck, was it a deep cut. You know. Okay, so I have to admit something. I haven't watched it. I only heard about it. Really? Did he cry? No, 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 no. Rick, like, wept like it was his final appearance on TV ever. I swear to God, I, it might have been. Genuinely, they might not have him on TV anymore because his daughter ditched him. Said, "I don't need you anymore." But it was beyond that because she didn't just say, "Oh, I don't need you anymore." She said, "Dad." Yeah, you think you're awesome and helping me now, but where were you for 30 years of my life where I was damaged because you were on the road being a party boy and doing all this shit you shouldn't have, you know, and, like, really hit real, real shit. Yeah, I you think know? he's still being a party boy, And then, he? well, <laughs> probably. Probably. <laughs> uh, but no, I but, like, doubt that. but, like, really, really, like, you know he was on Celebrity Wife Swap with Roddy Piper? Yeah. And, uh... Like he would, he goes to bars sometimes, gives them bad credit cards, and then buys rounds for the entire bar, and then leaves because he's Ric Flair. <laughs> Think about that. How are you going to tell that man no? Exactly. Think about that. It's like the most boss move. I know there's no fucking money. I don't care, and I'm going to leave anyways. Sir, uh, this guy bought drinks, and the car was declined. Who was it? it looked uh, like Ric Flair. We just won't say anything. We'll sue him when he's dead. <laughs> you know, the moment the moment Ric Flair croaks, they're gonna, all these people are going to be coming after his family for money he owes people. Yeah, I really hope not. Well, he, it doesn't matter because his daughter's building her own legacy. I, I tell you, she is. Yeah. Charlotte is really son. good. What? Better than his son. Well, yes. Apparently, yes. everybody's forgotten about um, Dave. Well, David was. I, I I never thought he was a great worker. No, he Crow tried. Did a better job. Daphne did a better job. Oh. But then uh, I guess Reed was a decent worker. It was shaping up to be, and then he passed away. Um, drug overdose, right? Huh? Drug overdose? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Drugs in that family. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's dark. Now, because that was part of like Rick's weird, like okay, so they did the the WWE 2K14. Uh, Reveal party uh-huh. at SummerSlam where they had oh, a panel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rick and Flair rambled. was rambling and rambling. He was drinking. He also said and TNA on that panel. Dude, he said a lot of crap. 
and WWE fired Jim Ross for it. Because Jim was the host. Yeah, didn't they try to say that Jim was had been drinking and he yes. was slurring his words, even though the guy actually had a medical condition, so he probably was. I, I can't remember if, if JR admitted to having like one drink in the green room with the guys or whatever, but he wasn't like toasted. And the problem wasn't even that. It was The reason he got fired is because he didn't reel them in and put them back on track. But how do you interrupt fucking Ric Flair? You don't. You respect the man. And here's the part that pissed me off, okay? WWE is trying to present a certain image, right? And I respect that. The 2K people loved it. Like, that WWE, WWE went to them and apologized, and they're like, it was great. It was awesome. It was fantastic. We loved it. It, it, it got everybody involved. Everyone's laughing, having a good time. It's like, people are going to be talking about so you're this. making the fans feel alive. Like, something CM Punk would probably be able to pull off, since I know you're a huge Punk fan, mate. Well, you know he's still undefeated in UFC. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not even talk about that. Considering he's not going to have a match, and then before it's all said and done, he's going to just end up back in the WWE. He's just going to be let go. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know it's coming. If he goes back to WWE, that's like... It's got to be like the biggest saving face type thing. It's where he just a slap in the face to your fans after that last tangent where you're doing that work, which I think it was a work, where he's going off with the mic saying, it's like, no, Vince doesn't care about you. Vince is going to do whatever he wants, and you, the fans, are just going to swallow it week after week, which is true. No, no, no. That was, he was, he was, that was after he quit WWE, and he was on Colt Cabana. He was shoot. He was. He was. That was a shoot. He was not bullshitting. That was a shoot. Yeah. I thought it may have been a work. Like Vince may have been in on. Said, go ahead and say it. Let's see what the controversy brings. Okay. The the shoot that you're talking about was he was when he was on the stage, and they knew he was going to say something, and kind of shoot. So it, it it's what's called a work shoot where they know he's going to shoot. They know exactly what. Don't know exactly what he's going to say. They have, they might have an idea. That's why they cut his mic. And so when he started going too far, then they cut the mic and like, all right, that was too much. And he was right. The fans still sit week after week, swallowing the same fucking regurgitated can, shit. Can I say though, I'm so glad that they brought John Cena back to have the fucking club beat the fuck out of him. I saw a picture the other day. Uh huh. It was Vince writing on a piece of paper his plans for the AJ Styles John Cena feud. AJ wins the first match. Cena wins the other 99. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes, though. That's how he's going to well, be that's... on his deathbed. He's going to be like, <sighs> put over Gilbert. Paul. Paul, composer. What is it, Pop? Actually, let me make that a little bit more. What is it, Papa? <laughs> <laughs> Cena wins. <laughs> <laughs> His dying words are Cena wins. That's great. That'd be a hell of a thing to have to uphold. Why is that not a cartoon? I would watch the fuck out of that. Well, I've heard Camp WWE has been doing some pretty funny stuff. Let me tell you, Camp WWE is fucking raunchy. Fucks and all. They do not censor a goddamn thing. That's cool. It Was is, Seth Green in, the, in yeah, on that? Yeah, he's the creative head of it, yeah. Is he? And they're giving Wait, him full reign. This? Camp WWE is an adult-themed cartoon involving the WWE camp, which is like a, a camp where people, like kids, go. You know, but the ki- the is this ki- like a spoof? Is this like a mockery? No, they're putting it out to be funny as hell, and it is. It's just really, it's like filthy too. Like it's and Vince is part of this. Yeah. Oh my God, Vince had one of the funniest lines Dude. in the first episode. He goes, uh, he's like opening fan mail and shit, and he's looking at stuff on his on his desk, and he grabs the thing and he goes, "I couldn't wear this bra probably," and just throws it. You know, like it's a it's a it's a, you know. I think I'm going to skip wrestling. I think I'm just going to start watching this for my entertainment, my wrestling news. You should. It's really good. I mean, you don't, you'll get no news. Is this uh, on the network? Yeah. It's a network exclusive. I told you. I'd check it maybe like every once every couple of months. I'll definitely go I back into it and check out some NXT and some stuff. They, they, they've done some pretty funny stuff on the Edge and Christian show, too. Oh, that show's great. They already wrapped season one. Oh, dude. Like, there's a clip I saw like, on Facebook uh, where like they, they're in the warehouse and they find a find a crate full of old championship belts like like well look it's the old ECW belt that you tarnished <laughs> and they're like like they're finding all these belts and they're like kind of like dog on stuff and they go wait a minute so something's missing where's the million dollar championship 
and they hear something, look, they look back, and there's Virgil with the belt. I'm like, Virgil, what are you doing here? And he takes off running with the belt. <laughs> that is gold. <laughs> Literally, he stole gold. See what you did there. That was good. Oh, ah, uh, you didn't even see what you did there. No, no, not at all. I was like half expecting something from Ted DiBiase, but we know that's not going to no, happen. Edge and Christian, though, they also do the chumps, the chump stain challenge, where Edge challenges Christian to something or vice versa, and it'll be like uh, we're going to play the first, we're going to play this wrestler's theme song, and you have to finish the lyrics or whatever, and then you know whoever wins the series in the you know gets a point, and then at the end of seven. They have to face an ultimate punishment. Ouch. And then the only sad thing was Christian had to face the ultimate punishment, but it was, like, definitely planned, kind of. Like, it wasn't as funny as I wanted it to be. That was the only downside to the whole show, and that was the last thing on the last episode. So, uh, But for the most part, yeah, it's like – and then, like, have you ever seen Swerved? Uh, I don't think so. It's jackass pranks with wrestlers. Like, they prank wrestlers. It's some of the funniest TV you'll ever see, man. They do this thing where they're sitting, the, some of the wrestlers, it's Heath Slater, The Ascension, and somebody else, I can't remember who it was, uh, are sitting around in, at this dinner table in this restaurant, and this guy's grabbing this waitress's ass, like, who also works at the place, and then he's like, oh, that's my sister. And these guys are, like, ready to fucking fight him, dude. You can tell, you know. And they're, like, heated and ready to battle. And then, like, they reveal that it's a work, and then you know, the wrestlers break out laughing because they don't know when it's coming, you know. The network has some cool shit, my friend. I will show you the ways. Yeah, I think we're gonna end up watching everything but wrestling. It also, tab tab <laughs> table for three. Yeah, that's a good one too. Is just three three wrestlers. You don't know who you're gonna sit down with and have dinner, and talk. And they just have three. They, 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 they did. They Sting, Vader, and who was the third one? Was DDP. D yeah, yeah, DDP. I'm glad I didn't make my remark earlier about thinking that Vader is irrelevant, considering you just mentioned he was on a segment. I really didn't think he was still even around. I mean, I don't think he is, but like, like he has come back and he he did that. He inducted Stan Hansen into the Hall of Fame this year. Fuck yeah, the lariat. Yep. Yeah. But you know, I mean. I'm excited for the brand split because I'm excited for them to try and do something different. I do want an hour less of Raw because I think, I think it's offset if they're trying to compete with each other. Totally. Three versus two. It's unfair. Right. Okay, so I'm going to ask this question. I'll ask you both. And, and you have a total disadvantage because you don't know the roster. That's, gonna, that's why I want to ask you. But I'm going to ask you first, who does Raw draft first and who does SmackDown draft first? If you... Assume that SmackDown's getting first pick. Okay. We'll play it that way. SmackDown has the first pick. And, and if, say we do it in the same vein of what I said is that the champion doesn't get drafted. Okay. Okay, so so Reigns is safe. Yep. SmackDown? Yep. John Cena. Okay. Now Raw. The club. As a, as a trio? Yeah. If you take one, you have to take them all. So well, that's what they did with the NWO during the original draft. That's true. and But, okay, so if I don't do that, I would do AJ Styles. Okay. Keep AJ on Raw AJ for sure. AJ or... Yeah, uh, mm. yeah see, that's I was... Going, you know what? I'm going club. Okay. Keep, okay. I'm keeping club. Okay. Now, you know nothing about the roster, so this is why I'm excited to hear. SmackDown gets the first pick. Who are you going to draft as SmackDown's manager? Spike Dudley. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> and then for Raw... Still as a manager? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, hell. I would make Stig the manager of Raw. Okay, so we're going to start. That's interesting. Not what I was expecting, but I like it. Well, I thought about going with comedy and maybe try to bring, bring, bring back Raven, give him some spotlight. But I was like, no, I was like, I was like, I'll be serious on this one. Give Stig some light. Give him out of the ring. He's got the experience. Would you Come put him in the knowledge. makeup? Huh? Would you put him in the makeup? As a manager? Yeah. See, that's a hard question. It's what suit I'm, and makeup. Suit and makeup. <laughs> that's kind of sick. That'd I would classic. actually be. Yeah. All black. Hair in a ponytail? Yeah. Yes. Hair pulled back, black on black, black tie, black shirt, black suit. And then the face paint. Yep. Love be, it. That almost like be look like the like 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 the kiss cover with them. Dress to kill. Dress to kill. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah, we well, wrapped it back to music. That's how we just did that. That was great. Is cool. there any uh, anything else we want to cover about? Yeah, I, I think we're good. I, I think I think we've kind of like had enough of the things we wanted to talk about, talked about, and all the other rambling stuff that we wanted to talk about. Talk <laughs> yeah, about. totally. Well, 
Uh, yes. Go ahead and wrap it then, man. What's that? I'm sorry. I can't hear you with all the noise behind me. I said we can go ahead and wrap this, man. I think so, too. I think it's been a really cool episode. Tony, thank you for coming on, Thanks. man. Thanks. It was, it was right. awesome with us. Now, we got to get him on Journey in the Comics sometime. We, we do. That we would be get you on sometime and have you Skype in and have you bull, like, BS with us on there. And literally, well, I, I mean, we, we talk about comics, movies, television, whatever is going on. So Don't be surprised if you actually end up filming episode, or do recording episode 101 tonight because you're just like, you know what? Fuck this. We're bored. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and do it now. We might. We might not. We'll have to see how we're feeling. Hey, oh. we more welcome to Journey to Comics 101. And with us, a surprise guest. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's still t- Tony. <laughs> <laughs> he would be the first to ever cross three of our four show platformed guests. Yeah. I doubt for having a trifecta. I want a record. I Tell mean, other people to go fuck themselves. That's I, my I'll, spot. He's almost a Grand Slam champion for he our got, network. He is almost the GIC Grand Slam champion. That's great. Yeah. I'm right, Shawn awesome. Michaels? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. You're the heartbreak, Tony. Yeah. That's dark. Sweet shit music is yeah. all about yeah. I could do these days. Yeah. That's Sweet awesome. shit music. That was uh, Mick, right? That was Mick. That was, that was the duder. Yeah. Hell yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, um... Well, again, it was cool to be live from Villains Con twice. Uh, this one's yeah. a little bit different, a little more personal. Exactly, yeah. Um, but I liked it. It, was, it is different, man. Yeah. It, it's more of a just a sit back and chill and talk while other people are making a lot of noise behind us. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, uh, if that's all, everybody, I'm Nate. I'm Brando. Uh, I'm just Tony. All right. Thank you for checking out Journey into Wrestling.